formal garden can be quite daunting. There are a few very simple rules that you need to stick to. Stick to these and it'll work out. Number one, find your main axis of your house or any point, whether it's a building, whether it's your line of your home, so in other words, maybe a fence. Find your axis and work off those. Keep your main line straight, just like this beautiful path that's going down here. And then I've got an axis, shoop, straight through there. Those are the first things that you want to do. Once you've got that right, you need something else to hold it together, whether it's going to be edging or whether it's going to be simply a Buxus hedge, just like this. But that holds it all. So you see, it's like the framework. Holds it all together and then you start playing in between with the softness. Because we talk about formal, it doesn't mean you need the same thing over and over and over again. Not at all. It's your main lines that hold it together. So we know that we need our main axes. We need something to keep it together. At the end of your main axes, the next secret is to have something that's going to make you walk down the garden path. It's no use having your path end up nowhere, you know? Like, well, why bother walking there? We all need an Angelina, a Brad Pitt, well, either one, at the end of the path. What is going to make you walk there? Why would you want to get there? So it's called a focal point. And all it is is simply a point of interest, whether it's a bird feeder, a beautiful plant, or a bench. Choice is up to you. This garden designed by Stephen Mundell of Garden World, he's really put it together very cleverly. The simple basics of formal garden design, yet brought down to literally one, two, three points. We've spoken about the borders. We've spoken about either being cobbled and having something to find at the end of the pathway. But more importantly, let's talk about the planting and the repetition. The planting within this garden bed, which is quite long, it's about 20 meters long by about four meters deep, is brought down to very simple colors. There's blue, there's white, and there's a few little flecks of gold here and there. And the white is reflected and picked up, bang, in these beautiful, three urns, and I mean they urns, because they are way big, like just under a meter, but because the bed is so big, imagine if you had some little poopy pots in there. Well, that ain't gonna work. They're really gonna look out of shape and certainly out of form. So, by having the repetition of the threes, brings the garden bed together, almost looks like they're bubbling out of it. Yep, and that's the illusion of the repetition and using the same plants and the same pots within a formal garden setting. Spectacular. Within the formal borders that are wrapped around this big rectangular bed, take a look at the planting inside. I, I just love it. And you know what I love is that the plants have been grown and planted literally for enough space for them to be able to do their thing. You know, like a baby grow doesn't last forever. Same as plants. When we buy them from our local garden centers, they're this big in little pots. When you plant them, don't overcrowd them, guys. And you can actually see there's quite a bit of soil available here. Yet it's covered with a great mulch and it's giving everything a bit of space to be able to breathe and grow. In this planting, we've got delphiniums with their beautiful colors, either in the blue or the white, which will give you a bit of height. Remember, when delphiniums start dying back, if you look closely at the bottom, you'll see a new shoot's going to be coming through. So a true perennial. Of course, this awesome Agapanthus, Agapanthus buccaneer. What a name. And yep, got that gorgeous blue, almost bordering on purple. But what is wicked about it is that dark stem. Look at it. It's almost black. Okay, nice dwarf compact Agapanthus taking you all the way through summer. In between some foxies to flower in late spring. And if you look after them, keep them well mulched. They'll go right through in your garden, right till the next winter and early spring. In between, we've got a chorus, we've got a bit of dianella, and please remember, give them a little bit of space to breathe, because that's when you end up with something looking as gorgeous as this.